Did you know that the first impression you make isn't really with your face or your clothes? It's with your body language and that means posture. When we have beautiful posture, it says confidence, it says grace, and especially if we carry it with a smile. And I'm gonna get you there in a jiffy. So let's do it. Hi, I'm Kathy Rowe and this is Yoga for Posture. We're going to be working on posture by using our minds and our bodies, building strength in the pelvis, in the abs, and in the back. Those are the muscles that we need for great posture. So before we get started, we are going to stand as tall as possible and I'd like to bring some images into your mind. The first image is about your pelvis and if you can just imagine your pelvis like a bowl, we want the bowl of the pelvis always to be level when we're standing tall. You know when you see little kids, they often stand like this, very sway back and the soup is spilling out the front of the bowl. Or as we age, can't get our legs all the way straight and start to slump. The soup is filling out of the back of the bowl. But we want to pull everything up level and our first principle is to think about keeping the pelvis level. Now one of the ways we are going to do that is by thinking of the abdominals. These are a little bit hard to access just intellectually, so it helps to use some visualizations and your imagination. So if you can imagine you just took your pants out of the dryer and the zipper's a little too hot in the front, as the bowl of the pelvis is so stiff, level, you are pulling your lower abs away from the hot zipper, away and standing tall. Now I'd like you to think of your spine, your vertebrae like a string of pearls that the string is pulling down in the back but up in the front so no pearl sits on top of another pearl. So we are activating the abs, the erector spinae in your back. Now get your ears over your shoulders and these are the principles we want to keep throughout our practice. The shoulder blades are really pulling down in your back. We're going to start from there in mountain pose. Everything pulls down so the fingers pull down, the feet push down, but the kneecaps pull up. And now I'd like to, you to think about a Kegel. That is the muscles in your lower pelvis that are the muscles that you use to restrict or stop the flow of urine. So you squeeze and then pull up. Now press your tummy away from the hot zipper, shoulders down in the back, ears over the shoulders and take a deep breath in. Shoulders stay down as your arms come up. I know it's tempting to lift those shoulders. Everything comes to the center. Very tempting to lift the shoulders as your arms rise, but we will not up and open. Again, we're taking it up, keeping the shoulders down. Now don't stick that tailbone out when the arms come up. That's a really common error that I see people doing. I'll show you what I mean. So when you take the deep breath, people often lift their shoulders and stick their behind out and go. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep everything lifted in our posture and the shoulders down and then back to the center. Both arms are going to lift up. We're going to take your right arm and push it down as hard as you can and without your tailbone sticking out in the back. We don't want to go into that posture. Keeping the pelvis level, we'll take a stretch to the side with the shoulder down. And now it comes back up. Now press that shoulder down as much as you can and open. Let's go to the other side. The hips do not sway out to the side. You stay super lifted. Shoulder stays down away from your ears. And everything lifts up. We're gonna take both arms up. I'm gonna turn so you can see. Now without shifting your weight to your heels, we are going to come everything forward into a flat back. So we did not shift your weight back there. We keep it forward and that builds strength in the back and in the abs. Now we'll bend the knees, everything relaxes. Coming back up, 
get that pelvis right into place so the bowl went right into place the shoulder blades are going to pull down this is called cactus and I'd like you to think that your elbow is like on a shelf and you are pushing down so when that happens you start to activate some muscles in your back and that's what we want strong back muscles for our posture so push that down and then lift up again without shifting your weight back you keep the hips right over the feet we come to flat back and hold now pull your head toward the wall and pull your tailbone toward the opposite wall get your tummy away from that hot zipper pull the kegel all that happens ears are over your shoulders bend your knees and come on down relax your back rolling everything up your arms are going to come like you're taking off your t-shirt get the pelvis level get the shoulders down in your back open into that cactus pushing down strengthening the back lifting up flat back over see how your fingers are right lined up with your armpits we don't want to take them back there fingers in the armpits all in one line neck reaches long bend your knees relax arms cross over take a deep breath in press those elbows down into cactus now I'm going to turn sideways so you can see we're taking the arms to the front and we are going to start a movement that I call row the boat but I want to show you how to do it incorrectly incorrectly when you row the boat you stick your hips out to the back you stick your tailbone out to the back and you stick your tummy out to the front and you squeeze your neck incorrect so what we're going to do is keep this very very straight it's only the top that lifts the upper part of the thoracic arms forward row the boat back elbows back but your tummy doesn't jut forward and your tailbone stays pulled down to the front so what are we doing we are squeezing the back and we are opening the chest this is just the opposite of bad posture right and without your tailbone going back press the chest to the ceiling let's hold it right there and to the front so I call that position candy cane because we don't want to be a banana we want to be all straight here and just the top goes back like candy cane so rolling the boat is candy cane not banana we never want to pinch our lower back like that let's take some shoulder rolls and we'll put that all together so we'll take a deep breath in get your pelvis so level flat back over keep your weight over the front of your feet knees bend drop your head arms come up we're going to go into cactus so press down and let your back really have a lat pull down latissimus dorsi pull down everything to the front arms forward keep your pelvis level go to candy cane chest lifts tailbone stays down and opening the back everything forward and lift come back to flat back knees bend and drop everything comes up into cactus press your back down and pull your head up back to the top arms forward keeping that pelvis level don't let it tip we're going to go to candy cane press the shoulders back and front everything lifts up we're going to go all the way down to the floor now so we're going to come flat back just like we did knees bend put your hands on the floor and step step back into this position it is called plank I think this is everybody's most unfavorite position but this is the granddaddy of all strengthening for the core and it's those core muscles that are the posture muscles of the pelvis of the back and of the abs so while we are here in plank we do not want to be like a hammock we want to be like a plank of wood so pull your heels down toward the back of the mat pull your head like you're gonna shoot out of a cannon press your hands into the floor pull that kegel pull your tummy away from the hot zipper and the ears are over the shoulders so now we're trying to hold that posture while we are in plank which is hard inhale 
Exhale to downward facing dog. Up on the tiptoes, push everything away. Heels come to the floor and we can just take a little walk, walk, walk. Now that plank, that is the ticket. We won't do it a number of times, but I'm telling you that if you can do that a number of times a day, everything starts to get way better with your posture and with your strength, your core strength particularly. Back into the plank, we're going to bring the knees down, take a deep breath. Now just to relax the back because plank is a lot. Exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. That's a big swoop. I don't have a super gigantic swoop, but some people do. And into cat. And regular. We are going to work now on strengthening your back, especially the erector spinae muscle that keeps us erect. This is the yoga exercise that is perfect for that. We're going to come on down on your tummy. Now when you are on your tummy like this, we don't want to just lay there like a blob, like a water balloon. We want to really have some hold, like a corset, keeping our back safe. So here you're going to push the pubic bone into the floor so it's a teensy weensy tuck under. Make your thighs pull up. It's kind of like pulling your kneecaps up and you're gonna see that makes the derriere become tight. So on your tummy, we're going to be working your back but we don't wanna work your back without your muscles holding you in a place that does not pinch your back but lets you lift the upper back like the candy cane. So we have to keep the strength in the pelvic area and down the back. So pubic bone is into the floor, press your tummy in, belly button to the spine, pull the Kegel, and then we're going to take the elbows forward and lift your spine up so that you see a curve in the upper spine, like the candy cane. But we are not letting go of all the muscles holding and stabilizing the pelvis. So yes, you are pulling your Kegel. You've got the tailbone slightly under, pulling up the quads, that's like pulling your kneecaps up, so that you feel really a lot of length in the legs, and we'll come down. Now that, was the arch or the extension of the spine, but you didn't really have to work your back that much because your elbows were holding you up. In order to work the back without the elbows helping you, we're gonna put the hands right here by your chest. Look straight down. Now you've gotta get your principles in order. So we're gonna take that pelvis and level it out Tailbone slightly tucked under, belly button to the spine. Pull the quadriceps up. That means pull your kneecaps up and your quads will engage. Now pull the belly button to the spine, Kegel. Pull those abs away from the hot zipper in front. And then we start to lift and down. And lift and down. Now you'll be tempted to take your shoulders near your ears, but I want you to Get your elbows reaching toward the floor so that your shoulder blades are down in your back and lift it up. Now keep your legs on the floor, shoelaces on the floor. Lift one hand and then the other. And if you like, you can take the hands behind, squeeze the shoulder blades together, but do not let go of that stability you have in the pelvis. If anything is pinching in your lower back, that is not good. We wanna keep the tailbone under a little bit, the tummy tight, the belly button is up to the spine, and we are just strengthening your back from there. Shoelaces are on the floor. Everything forward. We're gonna come back into hands and knees, inhale, and make your back go the other way with a great big cat. So exhale into cat. Oh, it feels so good to make your back go the other way. That is a great back 
strengthening exercise, but we must be careful not to be injured. And that's why are, we are going to use our principles. We're going to keep the pelvis level by pressing that pubic bone into the floor and pulling the Kegel using our abs and all our stabilizers to not pinch our back. From there, let's just come onto the toes and back to downward facing dog. Knees bent, stepping forward, keep your knees bent here. So one of the things that we really want to be able to do is build mobility in the pelvis. And a lot of times the pelvis just gets kind of stuck, can't go one way or the other. But how we are going to get some more mobility in it is by tipping the bowl in cat and cow. So we did it on the floor, but here we are doing it out of our chair pose. So we're going to tuck the pelvis under, it's the pelvis first, under, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, and then go to cat, and then make the whole pelvic bowl the other way. So now, yes, we are tipping it, and swoop it into your cow, and round it into cat. Get that pelvis under so it's not just your back, it really is scooping it under, and then lifting into cow. Now to go to chair pose, we are not in cat and we are not in cow. Your heels are gonna be on the mat. Your tummy is so tight, you're pulling your Kegel. Your tummy is pulling away from the hot zipper. Your shoulder blades are down in your back. Your ears are over your shoulders. And we will lift here to chair pose. Now in chair pose, do you see how my ears are lined up with my biceps? And we are not lifting our chin up, but keeping the neck long. Now you can see how much work this is for your back. It's a lot of weight in front of you. So if it's too much, you just bring your arms here to namaste and then maybe one arm and then maybe the other arm. So we'll just stay for another couple of seconds and you decide if you wanna switch arms, put both of them out or stay in namaste everything comes up. Next for our posture, we are going to go into what is called a warrior two pose. Now warrior two takes some balance, but it also is great for training your posture. So in warrior two, can you see how all 10 toes are straight ahead for me? We don't want to be 10 toes straight ahead, but see how my hips are straight ahead and my shoulders are straight ahead? That we want to keep. We'll take one foot, turn it out and put it down, but the hips stayed straight ahead, the shoulders straight, stayed straight ahead. It's just that that hip turned out. The toe is now in the opposite direction. And now we will bend the knee without leaning over. So this foot is straight ahead, just like our hips and our shoulders. This knee is to the side with the thigh back and we'll open the arms and press your shoulders down. Now, many times I see in warrior two, which is a great pose for training your posture, people, I'm gonna turn so I can show you, people will stick out their rear end. They're letting the soup spill out the front of the bowl and that does nothing for your warrior pose or your posture. We wanna get that bowl all lined up so that it's right underneath us. So this warrior pose is a great place to practice your principles. In this warrior pose, the pelvis is level. It's not behind you, level it out. Now pull the string of pearls. Now press the shoulders down, and here's where you kegel, and press your abs away from the hot zipper. Now you can see how your pubic bone, your sternum, your throat, they're all in one line. So that is a beautiful warrior two pose. It's helping us with our posture. Press that front thigh back. It, has a tendency to want to kind of float in. Press the shoulders down. So in holding that warrior two pose, it is a fantastic practice for posture because all of your principles can be easily thought about in this pose. 
Now it takes a little balance, but we're going to tip it. So the front arm is going to have palm up. The back arm slides down your leg. Now remember before when we were a candy cane and not a banana? Yep, that's what's gonna happen here. So we're going to lift, keep the shoulder down, and instead of thinking banana with your tummy coming out, you're thinking lifting from the chest. It's a heart lift. So it's much more candy cane than it is banana. So we're bottom from the bottom down, from your belly button down is still one straight line with a level pelvis. And here we come back into our beautiful warrior pose. Now warrior pose, warrior two pose, you can see your legs are in different directions, feet. But we're going to turn it into what's called a crescent pose. So you take your back foot, turn it in, and lift the arms, and this is crescent pose. Now in crescent pose, you will be tempted, again, to stick your tailbone out, but we wanna get it straight down. We want to get the knee over the ankle. Now you can tell this takes an enormous amount of balance, doesn't it? So that's what we want. We want a balance challenge so that when we take our beautiful posture out into the world walking around, we've got the beautiful balance to pull it off with grace and ease. From there, let's just take the arms down, turn all 10 toes forward once more, arms to the side, inhale. We'll take a little breather. Everything just comes over, relaxing over. Let's put the hands on your hip sockets. Come to a flat back. Now you know flat back is the place where you have to really use the erector spinae in your back to extend long and you're using the transverse abdominis. That's that muscle that pulls your belly away from the hot zipper. Lifting up, press the shoulder blades down as you come up. Let's do the other side. Your shoulders and your hip bones stay where they are. It's just your hip turns out from the socket and now this foot changed directions but this foot still straight ahead you might feel like tipping but we are going to keep that pelvis level and then bend the front knee now as that front knee bends you'll feel like sticking your tailbone out back there I call that a duck butt we do not want that duck butt we want to keep the pelvis completely stable and level we want to take our tummy away from the hot zipper we want to pull that kegel not only in but up and press the shoulder blades down ears are over your shoulders knee is over the middle toe. From there, we're gonna flip that top hand without becoming a banana in your front body. We'll take the back arm down, shoulder stays down as you lift. Take a deep breath in there. Shoulders are both down. You're gonna feel like lifting up your shoulders, but really fight for it. Keep the tailbone down, keep the shoulders down, pull the Kegel up and press your tummy away from the hot zipper. Come on back to your warrior two. Now remember when I refer to your spine as that string of pearls, you pull it straight up. String of pearls lifting. Everything is going to come back to center. Then all 10 toes to the front. Inhale, exhale, relax over. The relax over feels pretty great. We want to take your weight off of your heels though and think about your weight being on big toe, baby toe and heel equally as you let your head go. Now hands come into the hip socket. Keep your weight forward on your feet. Don't go back to your heels and come into that flat back. Now just holding it there you can feel how strong you need to be in your back and in your hamstrings and we'll pull everything up. Take that deep breath in, shoulders pressed down, knees together, inhale everything up and center. 
Now that's a great start for us to have, introducing all those posture muscles and principles into our yoga exercise. So I hope you enjoyed this and please subscribe to my channel and even the little bell so you'll be notified every time I release a new video. We will be going through lots of yoga, dance, fitness for strength, posture and flexibility which makes us feel youthified and of course vitalicious.